Hi everyone, welcome back to my Let's Play of Metroid 2, The Return of Samus. I'm the Akari Warrior, and today we'll be exterminating six more Metroids. In our last update, we got the Plasma Beam, we got the Space Jump. Actually, no, that was two updates ago, wasn't it? Anyway, moving on. It was absolutely not necessary to turn into the Morph Ball there, but I felt like it. Knew there was a reason why I came down here. Haha! <laughs> Plus ten. Again, we have the water with no buoyancy. You just kind of move around like air. Like in the spectral realm. Now, this may seem utterly pointless, but I actually have a reason for uh, going up this side of the building first. Once we get up there. Ugh. So we see a Metroid cocoon, so there's probably one around somewhere. And we, uh... Keep on going on up there. Oh! We decide to spider ball up to that ledge there. Handle that guy. An expert, perfectly placed bomb. Sciencey area, yay! And that looks like a gamma, but no, it is a Zeta Metroid. As you can see, I tried running under them and shooting them classic style, but they now have invincible feet. The Zeta Metroid is the uh, first of the Metroids that uh, cannot be scrolled off the screen. They uh, use some kind of weird mechanic to kind of stick to you, stick to your corner of the screen. And of course they couldn't have made this secret more obvious if they tried. And it's quite obvious that they didn't try to hide it. I don't even know why they bothered with it, really. And at last, at long last, the screw attack. Get used to that sound, you'll be hearing it a lot from here on out. I hope you like it. So I finally realized that there's no point in exploring for secrets. And we just move on out of here. Once again, forgive my, uh, my wiggity Super Nintendo controller. And unsurprisingly, the screw attack makes you invulnerable when you're flying through the air. That, combined with the space jump, makes you one invincible, uh, Metroid Hunter. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. So, whoever designed this cavern needs to be shot. I really am not happy with them at all. For making it like that. We have the first battle. Maybe the second one, where we actually have to carve out our space in the Metroid dung before we engage the enemy. So we're treated to a game of Metroid here. The screw attack is a great method of getting away from Metroids. If you need to make a hasty retreat. There's pretty much no way around this. You're better off taking the low road whenever you go into any of those areas. So I essentially completely forgot where I was. 
and ended up down here by accident. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow LPers and hangers-on, to the most aggravating secret in Metroid ever. Basically, there is literally no light. You can see the missile expansion down there as a basis for comparison, but in this kind of game, having a situation like this, a scenario like this, is a, for lack of a better word, a dick move. There's... You basically have to lay bombs as your basis for comparison and keep track of where you're located in relation to the rest of the screen. There's only one reason to go through this mess, and that reason is the, uh, energy tank that's around here somewhere. And that's the way I came in, and I was debating not going back for the energy tank, but I was like, you know what? I'll need it. Well, maybe not. Maybe if I was... Maybe if I'm smart in the end game, but extra energy doesn't hurt. So it was by it's always by every time, it's always by sheer blind luck that I end up uh, finding the energy tank. Like I honestly don't know how I found it this time. It just kind of happened. It's so frustrating. I kind of wanted to edit this out, but I really wanted you guys to see exactly how aggravating and frustrating this is to have to basically run around blind. But I uh, was able to get there, as you can see. The fifth and final energy tank in the game. I think I actually passed up my exit up there. And we're out of that hellhole. Thank God. I always hate that part. So finding Metroids in this section is really a crapshoot. They're generous enough to put two Metroids on the same side of this building. That's where we, uh, that's where we actually started. So I thought I'd demonstrate this room. This room has a, uh, has all the beams, uh, in the game. If you're unhappy, unsatisfied with the plasma beam. Yeah, what the hell, we'll get it again. If you're unhappy or unsatisfied with the plasma beam, further down, um, you can get a different beam. The beams are arranged in the order in which you got them. So the ice beam's at the bottom, wave beam's in the middle, uh, space herbs above that, and here's the plasma. I don't bother showing off the rest of the room because uh, we got Metroids to kill. So back to business. And up we go, screw attacking our way. And another one of these damned spiky caves. Ow. Ow. So, there are more spikes on the ceiling. There are places to land on the ground. Another Gamma Metroid.
And he brings us really no problem at all. After fighting the Zeta Metroids, the Gammas just seems so much easier. So this is why I recommend taking the low road. The high road just has nothing but spikes on the ceiling versus the low road, which at least has places to land in case you mess up on the space jump. <laughs> 